We're talking on this program each day about the meaning of life. That is, why do you exist? What's the purpose of your existence? Why are you alive? And we have looked at some of the explanations that various religious leaders and philosophers have given, but we've come to the conclusion that they all share the same limitation as we do. They've never been anywhere else but this world. And so it's very difficult to expect them to give us any kind of useful or authoritative information on the reason for this world's existence if they have never been anywhere else but this world. Indeed, there is only one person that this world knows anything about that has been off this world and that has left it and said that he would come back and actually come back and lived for more than a month with his friends and with many who did not know him very intimately and has proven to them and to succeeding generations of historians and critics that he really did come back from being dead, and that is the man known as Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, we've been listening, actually, to the explanations that he gives for the reasons for our existence. And you may remember that, if you've been listening uh, to past broadcasts, that one of the things he said most clearly was, that whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and it can't be anything else but flesh. But, of course, you won't believe that. And uh, he said, you have desires and needs that you never seem able to satisfy whatever you do with your possessions. And, of course, that's most true for all of us in regard to security. I think all of us were brought up with mums and dads who probably encouraged us to make our own way in life and to provide for ourselves because nobody else would. Probably most of us had some experience in the past years of either the fears or the worries or anxieties of our dads and mums about unemployment and about strikes and about the disasters that come upon Europe, it seems especially. And uh, so most of us have a healthy fear of not having sufficient money to provide the clothing and food and shelter that we need to keep alive in this present world. And so most of us end up in that rather ironic position where we struggle and struggle and struggle to try to get enough money to buy enough food, clothing and shelter to keep ourselves alive so that we can bring into the world other children who will struggle and struggle and struggle to get enough money to buy enough food, shelter and clothing so that they can bring children into the world who will da 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 ad absurdum. And most of us know that we're often not making much on it. Indeed, we saw our dads and mums live and die in uh, not quite poverty, but certainly not in great abundance, and we can see ourselves almost doing the same thing. Many of us are increasingly frustrated about our own, in, uh, our own inability to provide that security and stability for us and for our children and for our wives that we feel we were made for. And uh, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said... Uh, the reason for that is uh, it's not security you were made for. Security is simply an attribute of love. You were made for love. That's why. That's why you feel the need for security. You really need to feel the need for love. And, of course, what we've been saying uh, over the past few broadcasts is that that's dead true in regard to ourselves and our own parents. Uh, often we didn't know how little money they had. We didn't know how little they were able to provide for us, but they loved us. And it didn't matter how little we had in the house. We had a great sense of security and stability when we were five or up till maybe we were nine or 11 years of age because we had somebody there who was greater than ourselves, who was older than ourselves, who knew more things than we did and still whom we knew cared about us. And that's what Jesus says. He says, listen, your father who created you put you here so that you could learn to live in trust in him. That's it. 
Who do you think gives you your money? Who do you think gives you your job? Who do you think has supplied you with the wherewithal when you haven't had a job? Who do you think has arranged your cash flow, has arranged the payables and the receivables in such a way that they just matched at the right time? How often have you come through a hard time and you've wondered, where did the money come from? I don't know where it came from. How did the bills get paid? I don't know how they get paid. He says to us, that's because there is a dear father who is my own father and who loves you as his own children, who cares for you and provides for you. And when he put you on this earth, he arranged the whole economic system so that you would have enough. And don't worry, you will have enough. And that's what he said. Don't be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? You're not going to spend your whole life worrying about food and clothing, are you? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But listen... If God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore don't be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. In other words, for goodness sake, Start being interested in your dear God who has made the mountains and who controls the oceans and who will not leave you without and start trusting in him and stop trusting in things and stop trying to slave and slave and burrow in the dirt to get enough money and enough things to make you secure. You'll never be secure that way. You'll never get enough, a big enough house. You'll never get a house that is safe from the deterioration that is coming in the neighborhood. You'll never get enough money that is safe from the problems the banks and the economy gets into. You'll never get enough clothing that will not go out of fashion or will not get holy. You never will. But what is far better than that is to have somebody faithful who will always supply you with whatever you need. In other words, it's far better to be able to trust a heart, a loving heart. That's what you need. That's the only thing that will supply you with security. The money doesn't supply you with security. Security, through the mathematical calculations of your possessions, is not satisfying to you. That kind of security is not what you're looking for. You're not looking for a material security. You're trying to s pretend that you are, but you're not looking for a material security. You're looking for the security of some dear heart that you can trust, some dear heart that has enough resources that can actually provide for you. What you're looking for is an assurance that somebody loves you enough to take care of you. And Jesus said, that's exactly the situation. That's why you were made for this need for security. So stop looking to things for it. They'll never satisfy you. Start beginning to realize that behind that blue sky up there, just look out of your automobile window or your car window or look out of your bedroom window in the morning or look out of your living room window and realize that behind that great sky is a dear father who told you through me don't be anxious about your life what you'll eat or what you'll drink nor about your body what you'll put on is not life more than food than the body more than clothing your heavenly father will supply you with all these and that's not just pie in the sky when you die that's true right here and now that's what this man Jesus said. And he's been up there and he knows.